right. This is the 33rd degree, Lucifer Tim. We are live, Infinite Plane Radio, 320-2024. I think I missed yesterday. I went out on a walk. I walked about 7.2 miles. According to my iPhone, if you didn't know, your iPhone tracks every step. Probably every breath. Like, literally, everything is being tracked for uh, future taxation. They're going to tax every breath, every step. You know, they rate limit you. Oh, you can only look at 6,000 tweets a day. And I'm like, look, you accept the rate limit on tweets. Soon it'll be on how many steps you take because, of course, you are a carbon super spreader. And I think I walked 16,000 steps or 7.2 miles. I went out 3.6. I do this every equinox. For the autumn equinox, I had actually gone to this pagan thing at a park, and that's where I picked up a lot of my books, which have really uh, piqued my interest in the various magical philosophies as they're described. Very interesting stuff there, uh, to say in the least. I mean, the what you would call paganism is really just what we always talk about. Um, astrotheology, a religion based on correlating the cycles of time with the lives of the individuals here on Earth. Fascinating stuff. And by the way, today I had a conversation with Amin Ri on his podcast, Prognosis. And I will put a link in the archives tonight. It was a two-hour talk, and we talked about tarot cards. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about, which I got to in this, was the confusion, or rather the conflating of the devil and Baphomet. And so we discussed that and many other things. If you're in our Gilded, you already got that link. It wasn't live. It's a pre-recorded podcast. And yeah, I think we talked for about two hours. And we filled up the time. It went by fast. No dead air. Lots to talk about, and I think some I mean, it gets into some interesting areas. You know, we talk about the symbol of the fool, and I think we talked about Jim Carrey a couple of times, but no spoilers here. I'll just what I'll do is I'll upload it to all of the RSS feeds that I have as well. So if you missed it on his, but also subscribe to his channel and his podcast. I think this is the third episode. But the thing I want to talk about tonight, this is having to do with something that was brought up. On John LeBond's Twitter today, he said, It's all scripted. Is this really the best explanation for the collection of 311 evidence? I think we need to revisit our assumptions. And he rightfully lambasts those who try to say that predictive programming is all just coincidence. People like Mike Rothschild. Just a coincidence or it doesn't exist. Or it's an eerie coincidence. Well, the mass media has reported on multiple eerie coincidences. You know, once is a coincidence. Uh, you know, two, three times, then it becomes something more. Uh, you know, that was the thing we've been saying for some time when it comes to predictive programming. You know, we're we're not looking at coincidence, coincidence. We're looking at intentionality. But the question, I guess, that's been raised: Who's behind it? Is God writing the news? Is some kind of higher intelligence behind all of these eerie coincidences? And I do not believe this to be the case at all. And lately I've been very critical of people using gematria calculators. I've been very critical of people using calendar dates between events and then to extrapolate from that some kind of prediction. I don't think you can do that. Patterns exist. Now, predictive programming exists. To say it doesn't is just to reveal colossal ignorance about how integrated media is with the mind control news. And it's all part of the same monolithic mind control apparatus. But I'm still thinking, well, I'm, st I mean, I'm convinced that the best explanation is the one that requires the fewest number of assumptions. My Occam's razor right away said, let's rule out AI. Let's rule out aliens. Let's rule out God and look at predictive programming objectively. And the more we looked at it, the more we saw it's beyond just stuff in the past that seems to foreshadow the future. Sometimes it's real time. You can't call it pareidolia or apophenia when you see... Donald Trump kicking off his campaign in Waco the same night that Netflix releases Waco, American Apocalypse, all about the birth of you know American white nationalism with Koresh and McVeigh and all that. These are coincidental alignments between news events and entertainment. But the entertainment would have been, you know, obviously scheduled long in advance. So how is the news correlating with that? Are these just coincidences? And I can point to multiple examples, and 
we've been vindicated, those of us who notice what's going on, predictive, concurrent programming, and I believe the best explanation is repetition and propaganda, repeating things like a theme, just again and again, so that you accept it as inevitable when they eventually fake it on the news. It's just conditioning. I don't think it's any more complicated than that. Is it a stretch? This is a kind of what's been brought up. Is it a stretch to say that man could orchestrate all of these coincidences? And I'm saying only if you have a very compartmentalized view and think that news is separate from entertainment. But when you look at the monolithic nature of the biggest psyops of all, specifically those having to do with outer space, you can see that there is a monolithic agreement on certain things and they all have to do with fakery. They all agree on faking space. You think they disagree on anything else of consequence? No. But I wouldn't say it's all coincidence. That's dismissive of evidence. But I wouldn't say it's an alien or God or higher power for a few reasons. One, if you automatically leap to a higher power, you're automatically discounting or even, I, I think, even exonerating the people involved. And I do think it's people. But let's look at the comments here. Just to give an idea of where people are at, Human Vibration said, To me, scripted is a nod to a higher mechanism, not a human-designed plan. Script, as in the auto-executing code of a computer script. So I would say that this falls into what I would call, what is called the divine fallacy. I can't explain it, therefore God. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke, any sufficiently developed technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I would say that, yeah, this is obviously seemingly magical. How do you explain it? Remarkable coincidences. I'm watching some crappy Netflix show about a train derailing in, in Ohio and there's a mushroom cloud, a toxic airborne event. Then I turn on the news and it happens. Or I'm tuning in to watch the season finale of FBI and they pulled it because it happened in real life in Uvalde. Coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. Well, what other explanations can we have? And so I'm opening it up. If you think it's a coincidence, feel free to call in. If you think predictive programming doesn't exist and you want to show off to the world how little you've paid attention, call in on that. But if you think God is behind it, or AI, I would like to know, well, which God? And here's where we get into some areas that I think it's, it's going to be problematic to go with that explanation. If you can agree that Apollo 11 was scripted from top to bottom, which it was, then you look at something like 9-11, I think you might say that there's got to be some common directorship, probably the same production company. So why would we look at predictive programming as coming from any third party? As in, the same people that are faking the news would be behind all of that. So I'm asserting that man does predictive programming as part of a build-up for bending our reality with fake news. And to rule out man on predictive programming while agreeing that man fakes the news seems inconsistent to me. Are we to say that man is faking news, but God or coincidence does predictive programming? There's too many examples of accurate predictive programming to say it's all just coincidental, obviously, but the intentionality here is of messaging. It reinforces what's to come. And I'm saying that's classic propaganda technique, repetition and repetition. So where would we draw the line and say, it's too much to say it was scripted. I think we can agree Apollo 11 was scripted. 20 years of fake school shootings, scripted, scripted, scripted. Where do we draw the line and say, well, the predictive programming is somehow unscriptable? I'm saying if you look at it as monolithic, it makes a lot more sense. But let's go ahead and go through some other comments as well on the, on the YouTube video. And I think the consensus, what I kind of picked up on, and it's still piling up. The comments are going to be piling up, and I will probably make a comment there, but my take on it here is that it's less of a stretch to say that man is scripting entertainment to match future news than it is to say it's a higher power. I think all those who are saying that 9-11 was a scripted staged event would concede that it was planned decades in advance. It wasn't something that George Bush thought of the night before. The reinforcement in advance, all this seemingly eerie, coincidental stuff is easily explainable, I think, when you look at this thing more holistically. But let me go through some comments. Jay Diggs says, didn't newsbenders allude to it being a computer on the top floor? Yes, so newsbenders, and I use the phrase newsbent reality to reference newsbenders, has a 
scene where, and it's a play, it's a 30 minute play, where a man is, he's a journalist, he's promoted to the area of media where he finds out that they write the stories five years in advance. And it's suggested that ultimately the stories are written by some supercomputer, which is a kind of fascinating twist. And it also suggests that they started faking the news with the advent of the atomic bomb, as in faking the news on this level, bending reality. And I'm saying that we have plenty of reason to see how they are bending the news like this in exactly this way, years in advance. You can look at predictive programming not as, in my view, not as coincidence or magic or synchronicity, but as evidence of this planning in advance. Again, that's my contention, but I'm interested in hearing other people's take on it. We're joined by Tim Osman, Osher, Jay Diggs, Ready or Not, Elephant Tusks. Says, I haven't seen Jay Diggs in a while. Let me see what else we have here. Tim Osman says, if it is conditioning, then it is scripted. Yes. And again, we're talking about all of these, and there's so many of them, this, this massive collection of disparate examples, whether it be in movies or video games or even comic books, but it's pretty much ubiquitous, this phenomenon of media foreshadowing. And I've been trying to wrap my mind around this for years. And the best explanation that I've arrived at so far is that this is how they introduce concepts in advance with repetition, and it doesn't require any supernatural explanation. But moreover, there's a reason for the supernatural explanation. Why is that the go-to? Well, one, it's, it's easy, fallacious reasoning, but two, I think it's by design. I think there is maybe even a deliberate effort to cloud the connections we might make with this type of what I would consider to be a mystic explanation, a non-explanation. Show me the AI that wrote the news. Show me the alien. Show me the demiurge. Because I can show you directors by name, James Cameron. I can show you authors, Tom Clancy, who would all fall into the category of metascriptors, Stephen King. We often talk about the Shining. Well, The Shining has predictive programming for 9-11 and references to Apollo 11 and, and, and more, by the way. But my point is, that's Stephen King and, and Stanley Kubrick. Stephen King wrote a sequel to The Shining called Dr. Sleep about some kid who predicts 9-11. Shining has predictive programming for 9-11. I mean, it is so consistent, we can name names. And what it reveals is a metascript, a story told basically they're writing history you know they write the history every single day with the fake news whatever gets the approved stamp of reality that becomes our history every single thing that we dissect and take apart every fake event will be published in the history books as it was released on tv for mainstream audiences the mainstream worldview will become history and what i'm saying is these control freaks write the history years in advance and they act it out on the world stage that's what psyops are january 6 total psyop I, I have a caller actually let me go ahead and open up my phone Just give me just a moment if you want to hang on there caller but i'd like the everyone's opinion on this because i think we're we're getting to a point where we need to know who is writing the news is god writing the news or is man writing the news? Is God doing predictive programming? Or is man? I mean, where does it end? Where does this argument lead to? You know, are we going to identify a source for all this stuff? And I don't think it makes sense to exclude man because it exonerates. Think about the Wizard of Oz. Uh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. You know, pay attention instead to the hologram and the fireworks and the illusion that he's a real wizard. Let me see here. Salt Siren says, dude, I don't know what's going on, but I've been getting shocked like crazy today. Feels like my hair is about to stand on end. My hands are buzzing. Spring is in the air, I suppose. Well, we just had the equinox. Vichmo Morin says, JLB's off on this issue. It's man-made, not a higher power. I think he's misinterpreting actual coincidences in his life. Like where he bought a salad that was a cost based on his weight. Yeah, this is what intrigues me, though is before I ever looked at news as a skeptic, I was looking at reality as a skeptic. I was really questioning things based on my own personal experiences with synchronicities. And what I see in the news media is similar 
in many ways, and it appears to be that way. And I'm just saying eerie coincidence is a nice way of kind of deflecting from what, what might actually be the cause. And the reason they wouldn't want you to know this is then you would see how all of it is integrated. We're not supposed to see the monolith. We're not supposed to see that we have a government, that we have a media, that it's monolithic, quote, globally. We're supposed to think there's different nations competing. No, everybody who's got a space program is in on the show. They're all backstage, high-fiving each other. There is this illusion that they've created that there are these competing factions, even. Like, it doesn't matter if they fight on 99% of the issues when the big lies are agreed upon. And that's the case, left and right. Uh, it's controlled, and it's a closed system. But, again, we're talking about the phenomenon that we call predictive programming. And here's what really got me looking at it closer. It's what I call concurrent programming. It's the real-time events. Like, so, for example, Leave the World Behind comes out, and immediately after, Tesla has 1.6 million cars recalled, which is or 16 million, because of the auto drive, autopilot, which is interesting for a few reasons, but it's referenced in the movie that the Tesla Roadsters had some issue with their autopilot, and they were blocking the freeways and caused the cities to shut down. Then you had the stuff about planes falling. And all this stuff, again, has been referenced not just by us, and not by the conspiracy theorists, but by the mass media saying, why are so many people referencing this movie? Why is Leave the World Behind trending? AT&T goes down, everyone thinks the world's ending, and they reference this movie. Why is that? It's coordinated. And I think the coordination is what they want to hide. They're, they want to hide the monolith. And this is what I, I think is so important, is that symbol. The symbol of the monolith, and the monolithic nature of media, but also what it refers to in Stanley Kubrick's work. And Kubrick is one of these, I would call, metascriptors. I'm not saying he faked the moon landing. That's a, that's a vast oversimplification. The standard line. Uh, yeah, he worked for the government. He was so good at film that they hired him to fake the moon landing, and he felt bad about it, so he dropped hints in The Shining. Oh, really? Then why did he drop hints about 9-11, which hadn't happened yet? And it deflects from the bigger picture here, that NASA isn't there to take you to Mars. NASA is there for worldview warfare, shaping your worldview. And I don't think you can separate these things, whether it be the space program from the fake news on the ground. And when I say everything's scripted, I think we can agree everything with the fake space program is scripted from Apollo from the very beginning to where they are right now. It's all a story. It's a reality TV show. You think those astronauts are saying anything off the cuff? It's all scripted. The timing of the events, the various calamities, the reason why they had explosions like the Challenger explosion on the 19th anniversary of Apollo 1, the anniversary of Sir Francis Drake getting lost at sea and dying or whatever. And like, what are these coincidences? Well, these are planned. A, a Colombian endeavor to discover Atlantis. Challengers will be destroyed. You know, you have that sentence created out of the names of the shuttles. That was put together by William Cooper. And to me, that's not coincidence, that's a scripted message, a meta-scripted message, told over a number of years. And if we can agree that the space program is fake from A to Z and scripted, totally, then why would we not suggest the same is true for all the stuff on the ground? And all of the coincidental resemblances between science fiction and what we have in the space program, I think can be explained as conditioning. I think science fiction and the space program are essentially synonymous, although science fiction has better special effects. But if you have a different take on it, please call in 505-349-0420. What is your take on predictive programming? Does it not exist? Is a higher power doing it, or is man doing it? It's one of the three. Although the evidence would suggest it does exist, and if you say it doesn't exist, I would say the burden is on you at this point. And I think we crossed that line a long time ago. And the concurrent thing, I mean, look at the release of video games that coincide with mass media events. For example, 10-7. You know, 10-7, Israel gets hit with the equivalent of 15 9-11s, and then they struck back with 300 9-11s versus the Palestinians. They always do these 9-11 connections. It's just so ridiculous. But... When they released that event, I was like, well, the night before, 
Modern Warfare 3 came out. So you had tens of millions of people plugged in to Modern Warfare 3, simulated war environment, which I think prepped them in a conditioning sense for what was to come the next day. Now, it wasn't really shocking or unbelievable to them that people on hang gliders flew over the wall and raped and pillaged and beheaded, beheaded babies and stuff. It was believable because they were already living it in the sim. I think it's like their minds were softened up. But Modern Warfare 3 coming out the night of, the eve of this, this is not a coincidence. This is strategic planning. This is Modern Warfare. I'm not referring to the game, but this is how Modern Warfare, it, Modern Warfare is Psy War. It's a mind war. It's endless. We were born into it. Uh, they never relent. Even on a slow news day where nothing's happening, actually everything's happening. Because every news story, no matter how mundane, is setting the stage at all times. And a lot of their false worldview is created by what they exclude. So it's all about where that spotlight stays. Vichma Morin says, here's another point. If it was not man-made, where are the predictive stories? Why are they always negative? If it was a higher power, why not a predictive story where something amazingly beneficial happens? Interesting. Elephant Tusk says, look up the plot of Division 2. Newer title, quite interesting. The Division would be Tom Clancy, where he had... And this is interesting. Okay, here's an example of what I would call predictive programming. The Division has this scenario where on a Black Friday, the money has some kind of biological agent on it and so it's the money that creates the pandemic that shuts the world down and there's a civil war but the idea here I think is kind of interesting because we recently had the bank contagion bank aids I called it where one bank fails and the next one next to it, next to it is going to fail any bank attached to it will catch it and fail but yeah there's a lot of predictive programming in his work that's Tom Clancy in fact his sum of all fears manifested as 9-11. And interestingly, one of the astronauts, the only American astronaut on the station at the time, was watching 9-11 from space. And you know what the astronauts were doing on 9-11? They were listening to Tom Clancy's sum of all fears. So they're listening to this audiobook, and they look out the window, and they say, hey, look, it's happening in real life. If you can believe that, I can't, but that's what's in the news. That's what's in the history books. But again, my point here is that you can see the coordination between 9-11, Tom Clancy, and the astronauts. So was Tom Clancy, or was his work, constructed by some AI, then somehow, it, in a really weird coincidence, was on board at, on the ISS on that day? Like, it gets to be a point, there's a, there's a point we've crossed here, I think, where we can rule in man. We can rule in intentional injection of propaganda messaging into our psyche by any means necessary. And I'm just saying this is how their modern warfare is waged. Jay Diggs says, hopefully Mike Rothschild calls in. Yeah, Mike Rothschild says there's no such thing as predictive programming. Which is a, a strange way to evade the topic. I mean, why not just look at some examples of predictive and concurrent programming and then explain it away? And the only way you can explain it away is by deliberately ignoring the implications. And the implications, it's all synchronized. It's monolithic. Dustin Malatesta says, what's hard to fathom is predictive programming that goes back decades. How could they write the script before they had any notion of technology that would rise? Right, that's a good question there. Going back decades. Uh, and when I'm talking about like this idea of a script, here's an example of what I would call Metascript. Climate change. So about 35 or 36 years ago, they introduced global warming. And the story was, if we don't do this in this many years, this will happen. So they write out this narrative. And I think they basically say, hey, this is the condition we're going to suggest. This is how we're going to report it. And I think they more or less do have certain things that are implemented in the like likeness of a reality TV show, they perform the news for us. Like, the news isn't strictly reportage. You know, we look at the screen as a window to the world, and the reporters have cameras and mics, and they're going out there and gathering info. No, they're actually producing more than just reporting. I mean, some reportage happens, but even that, even real authentic reportage is still contextualized by the mass media, which is built upon an edifice of lies. 
But going back decades, is that hard to fathom? Well, we can look at examples where it's reasonable to suggest that these things are planned in advance this long. Um, for example, look at the Pentagon, construction, 9-11, 41, 60 years later to the day. So they already encoded 9-11 into that. The Twin Towers were being built in 1968. 33 years later, they fall. 9-11 becomes the emergency number in America, 1968. 33 years later, 9-11 happens. So they had us programming us, 9-11, emergency, emergency, for years. And so I don't think it's a stretch or difficult, rather, really, to fathom this type of long-term planning, especially when you look at the new age occult stuff that really I think underscores the power elite this bigger script which is ultimately I think it's based on the astro theological but without getting too far into that they do and I say they I'm telling the secret societies they have these concepts of the cycles of time aeons and this great reset is part of it meaning there's writings back you can find at the beginning of the 20th century that theosophists talking about the transition into the new age and the things that would happen so clearly it's been articulated that things would be changing in fact Aleister Crowley's work his channeled book that they all worship etc describes the great reset if you ask me uh, it describes the new age and it describes the iconoclasm the destruction of the patriarchy the symbol of the male who's been turned into the Kendall and then the Barbie feminism, the rise of the Barbie feminism, the whore of Babylon, that's the goddess they worship. And the new god they're introducing is the, the androgen Horus, which is, it's not even that it's non-binary, it's post-gender. It's about, I think it's, it's this new concept that is beyond gender, and it's, it's the new paradigm that they've been planning for a long time. I mean, look at Manly P. Hall, The Secret Destiny of America. Long-term planning. America was likely in all likelihood planned to fall it, it is in a very scripted way it has been presented as the tower of babel 1776 america's construction begins and 1776 on the masonic calendar al is when the tower of babel's construction begins and we can find many examples where you have this theme of america as being destined to fall the american eagle actually is a phoenix so what i'm saying is no, we have examples of long-term planning within their secret societies, the, 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 the aeons, the great work of ages, or the great work is what they call it as well. The great reset is just a rebranding or another way of stating great work. But it refers to these cycles that are ultimately, like I said, they're based on astrology, the astrotheological. The great reset really began 1221-2020 with the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn on a winter solstice, a Christmas star the likes of which we haven't seen since Jesus was born. So it's totally a reset year. So my point is, the people behind this, the people who, who are controlling the structure that we're living within, didn't build it. And all indications based on the symbolism suggest that it's ancient, but it's been given kind of an updated science fiction veneer. So in other words, there's a lot of indication that the scripting in advance that is planned decades possibly a century centuries i don't think it's a stretch but we are kept in a very limited all oh, the world's about to end frame of reference you know the infinite plane society notion was based on there's every reason in the world for the power elite to tell us that that it's a ball this size that it it's finite well what if there is more land there's a lot of reasons to hide it it's all about control. You don't think they would hide or rather conceal um, our histories in the same way, and that's time control. So we're looking at time control in many ways. And they exert control over time by writing it in advance, and then we just have to live through it. And even if reality contradicts, it doesn't matter. They will burn alternative facts. Establishment facts are the only ones that will be carved into stone. Uh, thank you, we at IPS appreciate the support. And all of those, those have been joining, by the way, I'm going to start uploading video. So if you're a YouTube member, or if you're on any of the platforms, I'm trying to do more video content. I might do shorts. YouTube shorts. Okay, let's continue. Portal Complex says, this is a continuation of the old, nothing new. 
Yeah, I say it's the old world order has been transitioned into the new world order. That mass media has supplanted religion. But we have all of the same template, all the same components. It's, it's a template. From the flood myths to the new god construct, the concept of sin, transcendence, it's all repackaged. And it's repackaged superstition. It's all about worldview. Thank you very much, Nama. I appreciate that. We had a number of people sign up for the Blue Wrench Lodge on the YouTube channel. Ted Stryker says, I just watched the Christ Spiracy earlier. A must watch for religious people. Yeah, I think that's a... I saw a trailer for it. I think that's a movie or a, it's a documentary about... What, what is it? Would Christ eat animals or something? It's a animal rights thing, I believe, which probably raises a lot of interesting questions. But I don't know. I mean, don't they ritualistically eat the flesh? You know, a little cannibalism? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I, it is that, but it's it's um, not bad cannibalism. It's good cannibalism. It's about self-sacrifice. David Polk says, IPS going to take in any migrants. Um, I'm in a sanctuary city. I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So this place is... And, and something else to consider, you know, New Mexico and some of these other places have people who have family on both sides and the the wall, the border, it's, you know, it's it's interesting how it's looked at in media versus how it is in real life. Like, I don't think that migrants are a threat to America. I think it's funny that you have this group of people coming in and the left wing is like, oh, look, all these working age men. And the right's like, uh-oh, military age men. I'm like, well, which one is it? Just take your pick. And I would also say that you can attach the xenophobia hype to the anti-vax hype. Anti-vaxxers became anti-immigrant. And I think it's all symbolic. It's about borders. Oh, you're not going to get through my skin border. My epidermis? Nope, closed. Oh, you're not going to get through my border. We're closing the border. Because why? Blood purity. National purity. You see, it's a theme. You don't want the alien to come in and contaminate your purity. Uh, and this is why the right wing hates aliens. You know, the left is like, come down, beam us up, dear alien who art in space. The, the left worships aliens. It's like angels for them. These are super evolved humans. They've transcended race, gender, and now they all look the same. And they have transcended their own carbon footprints. They're just super high tech and they can go up into the, the realms above. But to the right wing, aliens are demons. Not a coincidence. They, they have all these things lined up this way because they're tapping into insecurity at a deep level. This is why Tucker Carlson is like, yeah, I have friends at the Pentagon and they said aliens are dark and demonic and scary. By the way, there's a lot of immigrants from Africa coming in and they're all military age and they're scary. I'm like, hmm, dark, scary aliens. I'm seeing a theme here. And what I'm saying is that the xenophobia theme was was picked up by the same people who were anti-vax like the month before, the current thing. But the common denominator is border. Again, skin border. The border to your nation and, I guess, the atmosphere. And, and who's behind Space Force to protect us from aliens? That would be Trump. But to get back to the topic here, I, actually, this does add to the topic. Because what I'm talking about here is that our media is, it is unified. It is monolithic globally that there's only one government and that that government itself is just mind control entertainment is a substrate of mind control and so is the education it's all serving the same purpose and by mind control I mean two things worldview and mental entrainment to the news cycles this is why they're so pushy about getting you to believe stuff and take a side you can't just sit on the sidelines and wait it out and suspend judgment like a skeptic. No, you got to just believe and believe. Take a side. Look how Ben Shapiro reacted to his own staff, to his own, the people he works with, uh, Candace Owens and others, who didn't immediately take sides with him. Well, what if you don't have enough information to judge? What if it's too sensitive of a topic and you want to be informed? No, sorry. They don't want you to be informed. They just want you to believe and just, it's just, a, it's a, it's a news glut and you're always plugged in. You're always reacting. And that entrainment keeps you stuck in the ups and downs. It's mind control. I don't believe the news until I have enough evidence to believe a story. And I still stick with fake until proven real. And I have yet to have anybody 
show me where we've gone wrong with this. All they can pro-offer is, it's irresponsible to not be paranoid. You won't be ready when the stuff goes down. When it gets kinetic, it's not going to go kinetic. We've already been conquered. There, there's uh, no resistance from within this thing. And what I advocate is inactivism. What I advocate is the off-world stage perspective. But again, let's continue along this. In fact, let me go ahead and read some of the comments on the YouTube video, because that's where I think it got more interesting. And if you want to call in and comment, please, 505-349-0420. So again, just to go back to Multi-C0 Dagger, just became a member of the Blue Wrench Lodge. Thank you. The raft is growing. Okay, now, again, he, let me read what he wrote, because uh, John LeBond has a great video on this topic, and it's worth discussing. I'm really glad this has been brought up. He says, I've heard people try to explain these coincidences, and to be honest, even the smarter people in the scene seem hopelessly stuck with poor explanations for what we're seeing. Check the comments section below. Now, let me go into some comments here. Let's see what people are saying. There's 46 so far. 46 comments. Farbro Bergman says there's no such thing as coincidence in this world. Adam Cook says it's not all scripted. A framework is put upon us and we have some wiggle room which creates ripples in the numeric construct. Numbers being an arbitrarily assigned language for the metaphorical existence we have. It's plainly evident in some formula there. We live in a fractal realm, says Scott Matznick, 3141. Let's see what else. Rasterpop says, it's the hologrammatic interference pattern we call the universe. Fanny says, the Demiurge works in mysterious ways. Abyssian Emerald says, it's like there's some kind of non-human intelligence orchestrating the big parts of the show. And this is a theme. Tim Osman says, a string of coincidences are not really convincing of anything truthfully. No matter how you cut it, the odds of our very existence or anything for that matter are virtually impossible. These coincidences are plausible in any direction, but you don't want them deemed coincidences for people to say that they have them figured out. Okay, well, Tim Osman is a coincidence theorist. You have to explain away concurrent programming. And what's more, we have predicted predictive programming. I'm not talking simply about something in the news is going to happen based on what we've seen. No, we predict predictive programming. We're like, oh, this this upcoming Obama movie, Leave the World Behind, is likely going to be chock full of predictive programming. In fact, when I was researching the movie, I came across something called American Blackout from 2013 that has a cameo with Obama. It came out on the anniversary of Superstorm Sandy, and it was about a blackout in America and obey government. So I'm like, this movie is going to have predictive programming about a blackout about nukes, etc. And what do you know? Leave the World Behind had predictive programming about that. So we predict predictive programming. We know that they're going to use entertainment to prepare us for the fake news. That's what it is. I don't think it's spiritual. I think they're preparing us for the fake news. Austin 108 says it's all spiritual. Well, if it's spiritual, who's behind it then? Who is behind the predictive programming? Because you can agree, or you have to agree, it is a fact that man is acting out the psyops. Just take your favorite psyop, and you know that the actors were, and, and the producers, the writers, everyone producing it were human beings, operating according to a plan that is maybe unethical, but they're doing propaganda. But you can agree that that's scripted, but you're not willing to concede that the preparation, that the entertainment media gives for this stuff could have also been planted by the same people. I mean, we're also talking about the masters in, in masters of marketing. Remember, the co-founder and first CEO of Netflix is related to Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays, propaganda, they know all about, look, they use propaganda to associate the cigarette with women's lip, to put bacon on the breakfast table. You don't think they figured this out by now? And not only that, but he's related to Sigmund Freud, who knows all about what's underneath the hood. So they get deep into your mind. They know all about marketing and propaganda, how to influence the mass mind. They've been doing this forever. I mean, religion did it before mass media has supplanted that. So to think that they don't have a 
a powerful system of putting messaging into our minds decades in advance, I think that's underestimating how powerful they are. They've already done it. They've, they've manufactured a completely false worldview, and we have to live within it, and we look at all the dupes falling for it. I.B. Henriksen says, who's behind it, man or God? Mod, a.k.a. the people who control the world because we allow them to control us. Yes, I concur with that. To me, that's the most likely explanation because if we say higher power, all of those script writers, all those professional propagandists and mind, mind war experts and crisis actors, all the people involved in the deception are now suddenly not really culpable. No, no, we're going to look for something higher. I mean, I'm sure they love that. Like, don't look at the man behind the curtain. The metascriptors behind the curtain. And I, again, I have a list of metascriptors. I have a list. I have a list of, I mean, look, uh, we have cases we can make as to who's directed which particular psychological operation, whether it be Stanley Kubrick or Jordan Peele. Or I'm pretty sure that the riots in Atlanta at the Cop City environmentalist versus police fiasco, that was directed by James Cameron. I'm, I, I can make that case as well. Elephant Tusk says, the CIA employs script writers. Lean Dion says, man wrote scripture. Elephant Tusk says, they have advanced abilities, probably using remote viewing or temporal looking glass tech. See, again, I'm going to refer to Arthur C. Clarke, any sufficiently developed technology is indistinguishable from magic. You're saying it's magic. We can't figure it out, so it's magic. And what if we had settled for that? I can't figure out how they are able to fake this, therefore it's real. Like, that's like going to a magic show and saying, hey, he's doing real magic because I can't see through these optical illusions. Well, no, you can't see through the optical illusions because you're sitting in your chair and they're designed to fool you. The TV is designed to fool you as long as you sit in your seat and you only look at the screen's perspective, what it frames for you. But the instant you look behind the screen, behind the curtain, when you wander out of your seat, you see it's a magic show. So I don't default to magic ever. I default to I don't know. Armin Rhee says, this is the collective manufacture of synchronicity. True synchronicity can only occur organically at an individual level as messages from the higher self. 777 says, Osman the contrarian among contrarians. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Contrarians have been gatekept into false contrarianism. They have been co-opted and conscripted into info warriors to fight in an info war that they can't win. Because alt news and mainstream news are two sides of the same coin. And if they can get you to focus on some mystical explanation, if they can mystify it, they can prevent you from arriving at the conclusions we're arriving at. That we live in a news-bent reality and they're writing our history in advance. January 6, 2021. Was that spontaneous? The guy with the buffalo horns and the bad tattoos who probably smells like roadkill. He looks like he smells like roadkill. You think he just spontaneously decided to go run into the capital of the spear? Uh, no. If you really dig into the symbolism of that entire event from the date on back, it goes back to Waco. Even the one six. One six has been some kind of code for this for some time. And Alex Jones's connection with it, Waco, one point six million rounds of ammunition was the reason for the ATF going in. We have many examples of what you would call predictive programming or these eerie coincidences. But what I'm suggesting is that we can find indications of a long term project. But most people in well, most people in truth or veil, I mean, maybe all of them for the most part, are unwilling to see how fake it is. They'll say, oh, January 6th, that was an inside job. You know, the feds came and Ray Epps started a riot. If Ray Epps wasn't there, nothing would have happened. No, I'm sorry, it's not the case. You had a thousand actors play fighting. You had some fake deaths. It was just a big comedy. And the normal people were 45 minutes away. They would have had to have walked for 45 minutes to get there. So the action was already happening and it was already being filmed before Trump finished his speech. Woo's News exposed this, frame by frame. Nobody died on January 6th, the whole thing was fake. But the whole thing was also uh, predicted in many ways. And what I'm suggesting here is that long-term planning is the rule, not the exception with everything. Uh, here's another example, George Floyd, 
Derek Chauvin. The names tell the story in, in many ways, but even the timing of it. It happens on 525-2020, a day that in the Twin Cities, the sun sets at 846. Floyd is kneeled on for 846. 911 in the Twin Towers kicks off 846. So you have these connections between Twin Towers, Twin Cities, the number 846, the sun sets 846, and when you put it all together, you can see planning that goes back. In fact, Space Odyssey, the 2001 Space Odyssey, yeah, it predicts 9-11, but it also has references to Corona, and a, so the name Floyd is mentioned, and it even has a mention of a fake epidemic used as an excuse to cover up some kind of discovery, some alien monolith thing. So even back then, I, I would say you could argue that Stanley Kubrick is one of the metascriptors behind not just Apollo 11, but 9-11 and C-19. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right. George Floyd had a twin as well. Uh, Stephen Jackson, he said, that's my twin, that's my twin. And he had a, what, he had a counterfeit 20, which is a, a twin. The word 20 means twin tens. And then if you look at the back of the $20 bill and fold it, you have the Twin Towers burning. And yes, his twin, Stephen Jackson, happened to be the last person to interview Kobe Bryant, interestingly enough. And Kobe Bryant, I can't breathe. There's some connections there as well. But all this stuff, and it, it's super layered. The name Derek Chauvin, this isn't coincidence or synchronicity. This is scripting. The name Derek is from a hangman who hanged 3,000 people. There's a piece on a crane called the Derek that is named after this guy. So this guy went down in history, like the world's greatest hangman, Derek. Now, the thing about it is 3,000 is a 9 number. So they were 9 ing America. But he's kneeling on the neck of George Floyd. His last name is Chauvin. Meanwhile, you have the Proud Boys versus BLM. Proud Boys call themselves Western Chauvinists. So Derek is the hangman of Western chauvinism as a cop, oppressing the poor on behalf of the propertied class. So you have this class warfare motif here. It's all just theater, but it's down to the names. And when you dig into the scripts, you find these guys knew each other. Like if I had a friend that was kneeling on my neck and I worked with him at a bar for 17 years, I'd be like, hey, get off me, Derek. But he didn't. Why did he act like he didn't know him? They worked together. These were friends. And a lot of the stories from actors, obviously, who mentioned this, those stories were scrubbed. Some of them were retracted. But the fact of it is, these names, these world stage names are evidence of scripting. I would not call that a synchronistic message from the universe or AI. Derek Chauvin's name is part of a story. And the story is, he's the hangman of the West asphyxiating George Floyd asphyxiation like Christ and the kneeling. It's all symbolic of the crucifixion of the poor. It's class warfare. It's, uh, again, Western chauvinism is 1776. And then you have the 1619 project, which is the BLM's basis for their, um, what you call the, the, their review of America. The CRT perspective of America says we have to look back to um, America's true history. And this juxtaposition of 1619 and 1776 left and right is deeply encoded into leave the world behind. So my point being is that deep in the subtext of these propaganda films you also have layers and layers of predictive programming. So we shouldn't separate that from all these little scenes or little clues that we see throughout various movies. It's it's coming from the same place. And if, if it's not, where do we draw the line? Where do we draw the line and say that this person's name and this this connection to this particular story is not intentionally inserted when it has an obvious political message. And you'd have to say that that particular spectacle it was one of the most powerful and potent political, I think, propaganda, agitprop, agitpropaganda pieces of all time, the, the kneeling on Floyd. And if you really look at it, that's not really what was happening, but it's all about how they framed it. But again, the number, 846, the 9-11 connections, the twin stuff, the setting of the sun has a very specific connection to the, the story of the death of the sun god. Every night, well, at sunset, 
the Prince of Darkness set in the Egyptian pantheon kills the sun god, dismembers him, but the sun dies and then is reborn the next day. It's just this personification of the, of the cycle of time. But this killing of George Floyd corresponds with that if you look at the deeper levels of symbolism even the fact that he was buried in a golden casket that comes right out of Egyptian mythology and they had four funerals I mean all of it totally scripted story so where do you separate the stories that were obviously written by human beings deliberately I mean and it's it's very subtle this I mean leave the world behind shows you how deep they go that movie didn't overtly say anything but every single frame was conveying messaging. And all this stuff you would consider predictive programming, but it's also political. Portal says, remember they had a dummy identical torso to Floyd? Oh, look, they've got hyper-realistic training dolls that breathe, that bleed. And the very first building burned when the, when the riots started after George Floyd's death. The very first building was a factory that makes hyper-realistic training dolls. Seven Sigma. They had been in the Twin Cities for 33 years. Again, the topic tonight, who writes the news, or rather, who writes the predictive programming, who's responsible for it? Like, my main contention, if I had to sum it up in one sentence, you can't separate predictive programming and its scripting from the psyops that they predict that the PSYOP department that is inserting in a hyperstitious way, where they're, they're putting something fake into our world and we make it real by believing in it and reacting as though it's real, and then all the authorities react as though it's real, and then it becomes real. The same ones who are behind that have to prepare us for this. Uh, let's look more closely at concurrent programming, which I think is more revealing. So Uvalde happens, and they had to pull the season finale of FBI. But similarly... They had to put a warning, a content warning, on Stranger Things because it's going to open up with a scene of a bunch of dead kids. They didn't want you to see that. But they had to put the warning on there. Uh, oh, here's another example that is even harder to say is mere coincidence. The new season of Game of Thrones had come out, and I thought, you know, I'm going to watch this because I'm tired of this Roe v. Wade leak. They're going to regulate our wombs. This whole political spect uh, uh, spectacle was just out of hand and I was like let me just tune out I don't want to hear about Roe v. Wade for five minutes so I turn on HBO to start the new Game of Thrones and it opens up with the Queen's giving birth and it's gonna kill her and she knows it but they need that child because they need a male heir so the men in the room decide for her that they're just gonna cut it out of her and kill her so the show opens up with this barbaric scene of a bunch of men butchering a woman to get that baby out. And I was like, wait a minute here. What are the odds that this would be on HBO while this Roe v. Wade thing happened? And the Roe v. Wade leak is a repeat. That happened 50 years before. Now, again, how would you explain that? Higher intelligence? Some kind of advanced computer that we don't even know where it is? Where is this advanced computer that is using HBO to put leftist political messaging into an otherwise very good show where do we draw the line and again the reason why I'm sticking to why I'm a stickler on this is that I think if we mystify we obfuscate the truth and I'm all for demystifying predictive programming they used to say oh predictive programming is how the bad guys tell us what they're gonna do because they have to tell us they say oh predictive programming is how the bad guys are able to get us to consent to the bad stuff they do so that they don't have any sort of karmic repercussions. Which is not really what karma is. But my point of it is, that came straight out of InfoWars. They said, oh, you saw this derailment in Ohio? Well, that was predicted in white noise because the dark occultists have to tell you. That explanation effaces the fact that news and entertainment are connected intimately that at a higher level these things are actually being manipulated from a very singular and monolithic source it hides that it keeps it compartmentalized if you mystify it you compartmentalize it you give them plausible deniability some people so you, uh, you exonerate I would say the culprits here 
I'm going through some comments here. Armin Ree says, Hollywood, which includes news media and related, can only be scripted even if by an overseeing entity that commands the humans involved. Otherwise, reality would be unpredictable. I'm still not ready to concede that this can be, that this is something that is beyond the capacity of man. That's the big trick. Like, for example, the, and I don't even know if this is actually true, but this image of the Aztec priest and the obsidian dagger, and he's like, if they don't uh, cut out this many hearts, the sun won't rise, or the eclipse is going to be permanent if we don't rip these hearts out. Like, that's absurd. But the priests knew something that the masses didn't that gave them some leverage of control. And I think what we're seeing here is the mystification of a very easy to explain process. It's easy to say the gods are behind it or it's magic. It's easy and it's simple, but it doesn't answer anything. Joined by X322, thanks for joining. Psyopstacle says, where's Greta? Cole Anchor says, if you watch any of the documentaries I sent, there's a connection between Hebrew characters and Egyptian pharaohs. Dates add up, named similar Blood River. Yeah, I've heard that Moses is a reiteration of some character from an older story, the Epic of Gilgamesh. And I would say that that is true, that these are new iterations. Everything is being recycled, but it's the same basic story. Uh, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, that's NOAA, and they're preparing us for the Ark Storm. Well, that Noah is symbolized by the dove. That they work with NASA. Look at their symbol. Again, the N-O-A-A. -A. The N-O-A-A -A uses all the symbolism of the Old Testament Moses. I'm sorry, not Moses, Noah. So, like, all these characters, here we go, Noah from the Bible has been repackaged. Same symbol, dove. Noah's symbol is the dove. Now, why are they doing this? because they script our realities. We have been given a scripted flood myth based on the old one that taps into the same insecurities and it still involves the dynamic of blaming the sinners. Only the sinners who are causing this new flood that Noah's warning us about are wicked in a different way. Uh, for them, it's overuse of fossil fuels, pissing off Gaia, the new god construct. So Gaia is going to take revenge. And if you look at the symbolism that Noah uses, you see a big arc, you see the the satellite that they use that warns them, and that's just like Noah being warned by the angel of the coming flood. And again, if you look at any image of the biblical Noah, he always has a dove. And it's because after the flood waters receded, God sent him a dove so he would know that the flood was over. But NASA, Noah, they never acknowledge that they stole their flood myth from the Old Testament. And what's interesting is the people who believe the Old Testament flood myth don't believe in climate change. The people who believe in climate change laugh at the old flood myth. They're laughing at the same thing. One of them just accepts the updated version. You have the progressive utopianism and the trad right, I would say, idealized past. Old concepts, new concepts. I would even argue that virus is a new way of repackaging the archaic concept of sin. Same thing with carbon footprints. But this is all relevant, because if we're talking about predictive programming, we're talking about the manipulation of the mass mind, that the masses are being manipulated as such. And this is not new. This is a ancient science and art. It's called religion. And mass media is just the newest version of this old religion. And so what I'm kind of pointing out here is that the fact that they're using these biblical motifs and they're reiterating this stuff is showing you that it's the same people in control. They've been doing this forever. Now think about the power it gives them. You could fulfill your own prophecies. That's what I was alluding to with the, with the priests, for example, ripping hearts out, or the idea of if you don't do this to appease the gods, this will happen. I mean, if you have inside knowledge, an inside script, you know the future, it gives you all kinds of power. That's you know, time control. They control time. And there's that adage about he who controls the uh, present. Is that H.G. Wells? Controls the past. Who controls the past controls the future. Oh, no, that's Orwell. He who controls the past controls the future. So again, we're talking about... Okay, that book came out in the 40s, right? 1948 or something? When did 1984 come out? 
I have another book I have to read. It came out in 1949. I have another book I just picked up at a thrift store. It's called We, which um, is about a totalitarian state, and it came out in 1952. I'll have to check that out later. I haven't even opened it yet. But anyway, so back in the 40s, an astute observer of media, uh, George Orwell, he knew how this thing worked, the Ministry of Truth, how they bend reality. So if they knew this stuff that long ago, then isn't it reasonable to presume that maybe they had already written the 20th century, how it ends, and what comes next? And with that, foreknowledge and foreplanning is how they exert power. Um, with that would include the influencing of our minds through culture, through entertainment, through music, through the themes that they introduce. And the themes that they introduce are always going to reinforce where they're sending us. And lately I've been using the term hyperstition, which I think explains this very well, the idea of the hyperstitional reality where you would use superstition. And this is where I think it all leads. People say, well, what's the point? How, um, what is the reason behind all this stuff? And I think it comes down to control through superstition, through uh, a knowledge disparity between the people at the top, the knowers, and the believers. But there's a Latin phrase that expresses the use of, well, rather the exploitation of religion by the state to control people. Instrumentum regni, instrument of monarchy, instrument of government. But this is from a Latin phrase inspired by Tacitus. But what it says here is simply that every multitude is fickle, full of lawless desires, unreasoned passion, and violent anger. The multitude must be held in by invisible terrors and such like pageantry. For this reason, I think not that the ancients acted rashly and haphazard in introducing to the people notions concerning gods and beliefs and the terrors of hell. So the point of it is that, quote, um, that if it had been possible to form a state of wise men, they wouldn't have to do this, but... They specifically says here, superstition maintains the cohesion of the Roman state. So superstition, belief in gods. Well, today we have that. The atomic bomb is a very angry god. Gaia is an angry god we must appease. We have been given replacement scenarios for ancient superstitions, but dressed them up with science. And this idea of superstitions is still around today, but the superstitions that they give us are then given reality through the feedback loop of mass media, which is then reinforced by policy changes that reflect the so-called existence of these things, and it makes them real. That's hyperstition. It's a superstition that becomes real because it's thrown into a feedback loop that reinforces its existence, and it becomes real. And it does become real in many different ways. It changes people's minds, their beliefs, their attitudes towards others, and it can create stuff, real friction, it does actually change the world in certain ways. Although belief alone doesn't necessarily change things in the material sense. I mean, how many billions of people believe in moon landings and those are still fake? But, all right, let's see what else. Lean Dion says, prophets always profit. Yeah, I agree. It even says here, moderns are rash and foolish in banning such beliefs. So getting rid of a belief in these ancient religions is giving mankind uh, too long of a leash. We can't be trusted. We're too fickle and violent. And I can agree with that. Like, maybe we have been conquered for our own good. I mean, is that is that too black pill to say that maybe this is a good thing, in a sense? I mean, what would you rather have? Real weapons of mass destruction? Real mass shooters? I mean, the world that we live in is not the nightmare that the truthers think it is. Is it wrong to be optimistic in the face of mass mind control? I mean, it's interesting to think about. I mean, I don't have Stockholm Syndrome. I don't think that um, I personally need to be lied to. I'm not in love with my captors. However, I am sort of realistic about, you know, human nature. Armin Rhee says, reality became a movie when it organically it is an improvisation. 
This implies scripting and time span and scale of the script leans me more towards human tapping into an overseeing collective mind. Well, this is where I think we get into Edward Bernays, the technology of mass mind control, marketing, but also their understanding, that is the, the power elite, the intelligence agencies, uh, their understanding of hyperstition. The other day I was talking about the Hunger Games, how the elite are centered around this table, which has this miniature of the world like a hologram, and they throw stuff in. So if they want the forest to burn, they push a button, and then it shows you know fire in being inserted into the stage. And so if you look at it from that perspective, they're outside of the system that we live in. They're outside of the propaganda box. And when they insert a new element, it becomes more or less real because everybody downloads it into their existence. And they're extremely powerful and effective at this. I didn't really know. I mean, I knew she existed. But I never spent more than two seconds looking or listening to Taylor Swift. But how did she come to dominate the headlines, the shelves? How did she saturate our psyche leading up to the Super Bowl? Well, that's just one example of if, how if they want something to become noticed by everybody, it can be done. We can be synchronized. But I'm, I'm leaning towards the most mundane and I think reasonable explanation for what is typically mystified. I think it's, it's mystified. And I don't think mystification helps. So again, I was going through some of the comments earlier. The general consensus is that there must be, to account for all of this, there must be a non-human designed plan. So we have to introduce a, a god. So which god is writing the news? Which god is inserting this stuff? Or are we talking about aliens? And I think this would all go back to the divine fallacy, I believe. Here's an example. The divine fallacy is one which occurs when someone assumes that a certain phenomenon must occur as a result of divine intervention or supernatural force because they don't know how to explain it otherwise or they can't believe this isn't the case. It's important to understand since people frequently use this as an attempt to discredit theories they disagree with, so the explanation of this divine fallacy is pretty clear cut. I don't have an answer, therefore, let me insert something that doesn't exist, whether it be God, aliens, AI, or some technology. And again, I would refer to the Arthur C. Clarke, the law about something so developed that it seems like magic. Now, if you want to say it's magic, that's fine, but again, you'd have to supply some evidence. And if you're going to say it's aliens or AI or God, again, I'm, who's behind it? So that, that, that's really what I'm asking. If anyone has an answer, who is behind the predictive programming? Man or a higher power? Now, when we say who is behind it, which man, which human beings, the best I can do is I can direct you to the metascriptors, the most influential writers who are putting, like Fallout. We have a new Fallout movie coming out on Amazon takes place in Vault 33, and they're probably going to do some... Look, let me predict some predictive programming. It's going to predict how they're going to convince us that we've been hit with a high-altitude nuke and we all have to go under some kind of a lockdown. What's up, awesome Lawson Clips? Thank you for joining. We are talking about the often commented upon readily observable phenomenon of predictive programming. But there are three different opinions, or rather uh, schools of thought on, on what this is. The normie, the ones with their head in the box, you know, the ones with the TV heads, who see everything through that lens, they see it all as coincidences because they're programmed. You know, Truman can't see the set. You know, he's in the system. He's just immersed. It's an immersive illusion. So that's one school of thought. It's all just a coincidence, nothing to see here. The truthers say, oh no, this is evidence of dark occultists telling us what they're going to do, or it's a higher power. And then there's the perspective that this is all part of a fully integrated PSYOP entertainment complex, where the same people executing the PSYOPs 
are being used in the role of or in, in certain capacities within the entertainment fields to reinforce their psyops. Isabel Ann says, we pre-plan a majority of events in our life. They understand how energy works and constantly working with their scripts gets you into their reality and out of yours. Yeah, and I would add to that, that they keep us in an end times frame of mind. The world's always going to end. We're always waiting for World War II, the Civil War. And so if we're only thinking ahead five years or the next election, hey, the world's going to end in 2020 if Trump doesn't win. The world's going to end in 2024 if Trump doesn't win. Uh, the world's always going to end. But if your frame of reference goes to the next election, then it's safe to assume that you're not thinking 100 years ahead. And I think these scripts, the story, our story, history, and history is his story, and who is he? Big Brother. Big Brother's story, this monolithic story, was is probably written in broad strokes, in, you know, 100 years out. Like, in a hundred years, we're all going to be in domed cities on Mars. But it'll be Earth, but by then they will have rebranded it Mars. Um, they, they can write this stuff that many years in advance. By 2050, the ocean levels will have risen uh, 12 inches, and this will have happened. And it doesn't matter if reality doesn't match the script. This is one of my main points. We exist in a very cognitively dissonant world because our internal concept doesn't comport with the real thing and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter fake trumps real whatever's on the screen is realer than what's real like it or not we all know this we experienced it in 2020 but one point that the commenter here made about they understand how energy works you know where attention goes energy flows attention economy they want us powering the vision the history and believing in it that they're writing for us that we're living through and this is how it works we know it's how it works because again i mentioned this before open up a textbook and you will find a record of quote historical events that do not reflect what really happened and we know this from our limited perspective from the amount of time that we've been alive watching the news and realizing how fake this stuff is we know that history is fake at least with regard to these things that we've been talking about Certainly fakeable, but extend that back in time. You know, has it ever been real and objective? No. All right, let's continue. Awesome Lawson Clip says, Dude, are you a Christian? Are you referring to me? I don't have a religion. And for the most part, the dominant religion in the world today is actually mainstream media. That is the dominant religion. And it trumps all the other religions. It really does. Gaia won. Gaia is the biggest god. Hark says it's all fake down to the local news. Well, look, the local news can report the truth. They can say the sky is blue. This is the score at the Little, little League games. This is what the scandal of the day is. They can tell the truth all they want at the local level. But they are also speaking as believers in all the fake stuff that happened. So they may be telling the truth, but they're standing upon an edifice of lies. So it doesn't matter. And something else, uh, the media is a liar. Media lies. That's all it does. But like good liars, it doesn't lie all the time. It faithfully reproduces reality most of the time. It lies strategically. If a liar lied with every breath, you wouldn't believe them. They only lie when they know they can get away with it. And when they do, they augment your reality with something that doesn't exist. So most of the stuff that you see on the news, the local news, is just there. So you think that it's a window to the world. I'm getting informed. And it may be true. They may be reporting, again, on the facts faithfully. But what are they not reporting on? What are they excluding? What are they leaving out? Because most of our false worldview I think, is created by these lies by omission more than lies by commission. Lean Dion says, dude, where's my Christian? Yeah, look, religion is uh, a fascinating topic, but 
I think that the most important religion to discuss right now is mainstream media, which is the de facto state church. Awesome says, I'm surprised you aren't Christian. You should be. Well, look, give me some kind of, uh, send me something in an email. So send me some evidence. But I'm at this point, I'm, I'm strictly agnostic about anything that I can't prove. I don't believe in moon landings, for example. In fact, I'm not a believer. In fact, I would also argue that being a believer is not the optimal state for the human being. I don't think we're meant to be believers. We're meant to be seekers and knowers and understanders. I don't think we're meant to be sheep. I think we're in a dark age. I think we've been given this digital veil. And so, um, no, I'm not a believer. I'm a knower. I know what I know. And I don't assert to know things that I can't. I have a lot of question marks. I have a lot of questions. I don't have any false explanations to kill curiosity. But at the same time, um, I'm not going to be a part of something that is, I think, um, how do I explain it best? Because I, my background with religion has been a seeker. I've studied religion extensively. And my view of Christianity, I, I can't see how you separate it from paganism. I just can't. It's just paganism with a goddess stripped out. It's astrotheological, as is the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four seasons. This is the same thing that we see with the occult religion, the New Age. It's just that they've kind of stripped it out. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a pagan sun god, but born as a Jew. And it's pretty much just uh, repackaged. It's, a, it's, a, it's an old story. Sort of like the Noah myth having been rebooted. So no, I don't even know necessarily what there is in there for me, to be honest. I, I don't think you can separate it from paganism. But I do think we should bring it up to say that uh, the religion is the old school fake, the old, or the OG fake news, the original fake news. And what is it by, when I say it's original fake news, here's what I mean. They, they have the Old Testament that tells you here's where we came from, the New Testament is kind of current and some will say it's a prophecy of what's to come but it's what establishes the worldview what is what's to come who's in control and to me this is what mainstream media has replaced but you know this isn't the place I mean you can talk about religion all you want but what I'm saying is that every indication is that religion is just um, mind control worldview warfare and it's used to subjugate people and turn them into sheeple I don't think it uplifts people. I don't think it, it does at all, in fact. And I've been very critical of religion my whole life. All religions. And I've studied them all, I believe. I've studied most of them. I went to Scientology for a while, and I learned quite a lot. What, one thing I could say about uh, Scientology is that it's based on the pandemic model, but it's a pandemic of mind viruses. But anyway, um, yeah, I tend to ignore the religious chatter because you don't have any evidence for your claims and I'm not going to debate you on it because you're a believer. And I consider believers, again, uh, to be in a, a different frame of mind than the knowers. Uh, and it's, it, it makes all the difference in the world because you are accepting things as true that you can't prove, so your reality is being augmented. And what I'm trying to say here is there's no objectivity in the world. We're in this immersive illusion. And I'm opting towards objectivity. And ironically, the objectivists plug themselves into the media matrix, believing whatever they see on the screen, and they became subjectivists. And I'm not treating you like an enemy, but you know, if you're going to talk like you're being persecuted, like, look, we don't have time for religious chatter. There, there are places for this if you want to proselytize. I don't deal with proselytizers. I just don't. don't have time for it. But I said, if you want to email me, and try to convert me, go ahead. But internet Christians don't impress me. And most of the internet Christians I've met have been awful bigots. I'm sorry, but that's just true. Uh, if, if you're really truly a Christian, you probably go to church, and you're probably very pro-social. But internet Christians tend to be very divisive. It's like a political faction, and they're against so many things. But that's not really where I'm at. I'm not engaging in political warfare. I'm not part of the info wars. And religions are part of the info wars in a sense. I would separate religion from spirituality or philosophy. But when somebody says, I have all the answers, follow my book, I'm like, get out of here. I'd rather just watch CNN. Let me just tune in to some other program here. 
get a little more current propaganda, current brainwashing. But you're not going to convert me to a believer in anything. You're not going to convert me to believe in chemtrails. And you know how many people are mad at me for not believing in chemtrails? Because you would have to be a believer. You don't know them to exist. The only thing that you could know to exist would be condensation trails because it's a very well understood, very well documented and studied phenomenon. Hark says the concept of religion is mostly about astrological events and functions of the mind and body that make sense, but literal characters that existed prove it. Exactly. Prove it. Prove it. I mean, what a weird conundrum for the creator of the universe to leave you in. Like, oh, I'm not going to leave you any evidence for any of this stuff. What a conundrum. Thank you, Nicotromus. We at IPS appreciate the support. And hey, one more thing I want to say on this. Because I'm very open about my criticisms of religion. I don't feel like you need to treat people who are religious with kid gloves. They can take it. They have to take it. In fact, you might even argue that they should say thank you. Thank you for challenging my faith. Like, I'm always appreciative of the people who tell me I'm wrong so I can reevaluate my conclusions and see if they're right. And if they're not right, it allows me to deepen my understanding of how wrong they are and I can reverse engineer their wrongness and figure out how it works. So I'm all for debate. I'm all for uh, challenges to any kind of presuppositions. Violet says, your book says I'm going to burn in hell. Yeah, it's just too divisive. It really is. And when I, look, I, I honestly, I want to go to hell. When, when I look at who's going to hell and who isn't, I'm like, do I want to hang out with all these nasty tweeters? No, thanks. I'm sorry. I'm going to go to hell. I know it's probably going to hurt to be uncomfortable, but maybe not. If anything, if it's like Dante Allegari, if it's like the Divine Comedy, it might actually be kind of fun. You know, you just go down the different layers and you look at all these people you used to know and laugh at them. Oh, look at you, you, you philanderer. Oh, you thief. You know, you would be able to go down to the very bottom and then if you come out the bottom, you get a walk up the hill purgatory past all the people with the big boulders on their backs doing their penance and then you get to the top and you get to paradise. I like the literary descriptions of hell and the literary descriptions of, you know, Satan and the angels. I think it's all very interesting and entertaining, but it's not all that biblical. I don't even know how biblical hell itself is. Dewis and Pear says, I thought religion was making a huge comeback. Look, I think religion is making a huge comeback, um, for sure. Uh, Christian nationalism, QAnon is a new religion. There's a lot of religiosity, is what I'll say. The society, our world, is very religious. It's becoming extremely religious. But the ironic thing is that the most religious people of all are the believers in the religion of scientism. And that is the dominant world religion. And the reason I brought up Noah and Noah's Ark and this new concept of the flood is that I'm showing you how this new religion is the old religion, repackaged. They used to pray to an obelisk. Now they pray to a burning, flying obelisk. Same symbol, same god, same cult. Let's see here. Going through your comments. All right, let's move on. Now, again, I'm open to this conversation. It's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm not completely closed to the idea that aliens are writing our news or that AI or Hell 9000, that it's totally some higher power. But I need more evidence for that claim. I am 100% against the notion that predictive programming is mere coincidence or cherry picking, selective observation, cognitive bias. No, predictive programming exists. It exists. And that might be hard for some people to accept, especially people who live in the mainstream media box. People like Mike Rothschild, who writes books specifically debunking uh, conspiracy theories. That's what he does for a living. Uh, in fact, I have an article, Mike Rothschild is in denial 
of predictive programming. And here's what he said. The cell phone outage is regurgitating conspiracy theories that leave the world behind was predictive programming telling us about the outage before it happened. This is nonsensical and non-existent. He said it's not, not, not even real. It doesn't exist. Now, you could say it's life imitating art, just coincidences, and the artists have just got some kind of their... They, they, they got a, a good sense of where the zeitgeist is at. But here's the thing. By saying it doesn't exist, he's kind of being a little ignorant about many things we can point out. And a lot of the stuff is way too specific. Like, very specific. You know, it's, it's so specific that people are you know, led to conclude that this must be some higher power. It's hard to believe that human beings could have this type of perfect timing. But the reason why they have a hard time understanding it is their model is wrong. They think the news is a bunch of people with cameras and microphones recording stuff and then producing it and then pitching it to their audiences. That's not what it is. It's, it makes more sense to look at mass media writ large as a reality TV production. The, the space station is a 25-year reality TV show. The space program, from the very beginning, has always been a, a, a space TV program, a reality TV program. It's never been real. It's always been scripted. But it's been going on for a long time. All of it scripted and fake. Thank you, Awesome Lawson Clips. We appreciate the support. He says, thanks for hiding me in the chat. Very cool of you. Well, look, I was trying to leave room for people who weren't trying to sell me a used Bible. Used Bible salesmen are always welcome here, but I ask you to send me the content via email or snail mail. Send me your old dusty book and I'll give it a look-see. But you cannot dominate the chat if you're proselytizing a belief system. You can call in about it and do your best to convince me. And I would be interested to hear though, what are mainstream Christians' thoughts on Donald Trump being Jesus? on Donald Trump being King David, on Donald Trump being Moses. Has Donald Trump reached apotheosis yet? Has he become God yet? Or is he still just... I think he's, I think he's actually being compared to King David most recently. Like, there's so much blasphemy going on with this do-it-yourself religion. Salty Siren says, I had a dream this morning that I was going into a portal and traveling through time behind some cardboard boxes in an attic, and I kept trying to wake up so I could get my phone to record, and then I woke up. Funny that your impulse was to reach for the phone, even in your dream. I was just watching a couple of movies about this. Like One of them was about dreams and this group of people who are lucid in their dreams. But another one I just watched is called... Uh, and it, It's kind of interesting. If you're into the Mandela effect, you have to see parallel. They find this mirror in the attic. You walk through it, and you go into a parallel universe that looks just like yours and you might encounter yourself but the whole idea is this group of people exploit it they go into these parallel universes and every time they go through it splinters reality and creates a parallel so they don't exist until they go into these ones or rather they there's no connection between our two and they go through and they come back and they bring stuff but anyway there's a point where they bring someone from a parallel universe into this one and he goes crazy because none of the logos match up. He remembers a green door, and now it's blue. So it's like the guy's Mandela affected, and it drives him crazy. But the Mandela effect is a favorite topic of mine, and it is real. I mean, it exists. The Mandela effect exists. But is it about parallel universes? No, not at all. It exists, but its expl explanation is a little mundane compared to uh, parallel universes in CERN. All right, let's continue. Um, let me, I have a, a quote from Napoleon Bonaparte, or maybe it's Voltaire. He said, history is lies agreed upon. You know, I say media is lies agreed upon. Leave the world behind. Julia Roberts' character said something about how we live in a mass agreed upon collective delusion. Elephant Tusk says, if you ever host an IPS meetup, please, no pizza or dogs. Oh, right, right, I see. 
Yeah, that's something. Uh, uh, QAnoners ruin pizza for themselves. Pizza gators. They can no longer eat pizza. Except Donald Trump, he can. But he eats the pizza from the crust, which somehow exonerates him. Whatever happened with all that stuff? It was... I have an explanation for Pizzagate. It was a new satanic panic. And the old satanic panic was based on the same thing. You give people a group of symbols, you tell them, if you see this, it means that guilt by association. But we are having meetups. We are going to be doing some Autohooksology 101 based conversations, readings very soon. I, I might even start it, well, I plan on starting it this month. Maybe the next couple of days I've been considering inviting some people over here. Okay, let's move on. I don't think anybody here has a convincing argument that predictive programming is being done by a higher power. But I guess the question here is, what's more, what feels better? What's more believable, a higher power or a man? And this is why I was I was having a discussion with the very generous listener that I put on a timeout about believers. Um, believers aren't being honest. I'm sorry, but there's a dishonesty here. They're saying, I don't have facts to support this, but I'm going to accept this because it feels right. And my problem with that is we're, we, out of everybody in, in the entire world, you know, we are almost exclusively, probably, basing our entire organization, our think tank, on getting away from lies, getting away from mere beliefs, superstitions, hyperstitions, getting out of the immersive illusion. The whole premise for the IPS think tank is quarantining from that. Uh, this is about what we can know, and if that means we have a lot of questions because we've jettisoned so many false explanations, then so be it. We have a lot of questions. And it's not a coincidence that the enemy in the Batman movie is the Riddler, whose symbol is the question mark. They've been demonizing the question marks and the question askers for some time. Like, why would you need to ask any questions? The answers are there. They've given you the answers. Hark says, so how does the Mandela effect work? Is CERN involved or just a red herring? Uh, the Mandela effect is caused by a tainted witness working as an interrogator who, through retroactive interference implants a false memory and the person who is the target of this is presented with a binary a reality shifted as A or B it used to be A now it's B there's no C D E so it's always a binary and this is an easy way to steer people into choosing an option based on belonging to a new club not being a zombie conforming and also mistaking a prompted recollection for an actual memory. And that's the result of gas lighting. It's gas lighting. You, you got to look into the Innocence Project and all the people who've been exonerated from crimes that they were wrongly convicted for based on faulty eyewitness testimony that can be traced to the interrogator and how they questioned the witnesses and brought out answers that weren't authentic, that could be considered false or prompted memories. So there's a better explanation for the Mandela effect in gaslighting, retroactive, retroactive interference, and a prompted recollection. So here's, in your mind, for example, you have the Ford logo. They tell you, oh, this is the Ford logo. It's got a little swirly on the F, but it used to be like this with no swirly. So they tell you, do you remember it like this or this? They ask you, rather. And when you think of it, without the swirly, now your imagination conjures that image. And then the question is, did you remember that? Or did you just construct that because it was retroactive interference by the person asking the question? And retroactive interference with memories, it works. It's a well-known phenomenon. This is why you have the Innocence Project. So reality splitting with CERN can't be proven to exist. People's minds being messed with by interrogators is a well-understood phenomenon. And I have many other things to add to that to prove that the Mandela effect is real, but it's not what they think it is. 
without even going into the individual debunks. Appreciate the support, multi C zero of Dagger, always. And everyone else who's here, appreciate your comments as well, keeping this thing moving forward. And I'm happy to be wrong. If you can provide some compelling argument for predictive programming being the byproduct of something beyond man or man's not capable, I'm all ears. All right, let's see what else we have here. All right, now one other point, I guess, and it has to do with uh, predictive programming and concurrent programming. Uh, this, this final point I'm going to really make on it here is that if we're going to go with this thing being beyond man, um, we need specifics. So which instances of predictive programming are outside the bounds of human interference? I would need some specifics to be convinced. I suppose that's it. But for now, I'm resting on this hypothesis, what I call the Metascript. And I arrived at the Metascript in 2020 based on my analysis of the news cycles of the day. Through the summer of 2020, we were seeing repeated incidents of themes and stories from 1968 happening again in 2020. And it followed for a couple of years. We had many examples where it seemed like they were borrowing or recycling in a very specific way. Like Trump says something inflammatory. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. So when the looting starts, the shooting starts is just something he said out of, out of uh, he just made it up, you would think, right? It's just Trump shooting off at the mouth. It turns out that phrase came from a segregationist in 1967, 1968. And so I started picking up on this and I realized, wait, there's some kind of thing going on here. And what I started to pick up on was this use of storytelling and repetition of certain themes to color our perceptions of the news of the day, how they influence the zeitgeist. And I started kind of thinking too about many of these different actors we analyze who seem to be carrying certain propaganda messages across multiple films. And so I, I coined the term Metascript for this particular endeavor here. We're looking at a script that encompasses all of these different platforms. It's in politics, it's in entertainment, it's also, I think, saturating, saturating our psyche through pretty much every single platform you can imagine. I mean, it's a, what I call the, well, what's called an immersive illusion. There's no escape from it. It's an alternate reality game. And you're born into it. The only way not to play is to conscientiously object and step out of it. There's a link in the chat if you want to join the parallel media community on X. Now, one other point I want to make before we go here. The concept of parallel media is this. The mainstream media is all mind control. We know this. Alt media is deeper mind control. Alt media offers false explanations for the inconsistencies in the mainstream. It's a false awakening. Whether you're woke or you're a red pill in Trutherville, you've been fed a lot of lies. And I think it's important to separate from all the trutherisms that keep them in the box. So the box is mainstream, but at the bottom of the box is alternative media. They're actually beneath. It's like a multi-tiered cage. And whatever happens on the mainstream is accepted by the alternative, and then they add on to it. So it's actually a subset of mainstream but they're not out of the box. And therefore, we need this parallel media to establish a place, a space, for those of us who aren't adhering to any of their orthodoxies. And these are things that I consider to be beliefs that cannot be proven to have any uh, correlate in reality. It's just, it exists in their minds. It's in the worldview they've been given. I want to get out of the box, the propaganda box, away from the hyperstitions. So this is a culture of disbelief. We are fomenting a culture of disbelief here. Non-believers. And by non-believers, it doesn't mean we know less. It doesn't mean we embrace ignorance. It doesn't mean we don't pay attention. We're not ostriches with our, with our heads buried in the sand. 
uh, if anything, we're informed rather than misinformed. And by not believing, it means we're opting out, but we know very well why we don't believe. So ironically, we know more about the stuff we don't believe than the believers know about it, which I often see. You know, you'll find atheists to be very literate in the Bible, and believers just have the Bible in their pocket, and they believe it because. And that's what I'm suggesting here, is that alt media consists of people who are still believers, but they're alt believers, and there's a qualitative difference between a believer and a knower, between a follower and a seeker. So we're creating a, well, there's a schism here. It's already existed, but there's never been a platform for those who don't fit in. If you don't fit in Normieville, if you don't like Woke Town, and Trutherville is too saturated with mind junk, where do you go? This is the only place. This is the beginning of it. So I put a community up on X called uh, the Parallel Media. I suggest you join because it's going to blow up. It's going to grow. And when it does, you'll see the power of this and of this um, I, of its ability to, you know, I call the IPS a fake news wood, wood chipper. And Newful says, Tim, can you explain the fake ability of Ukraine and Gaza and what are they trying to achieve? Yeah, the fake ability, that's a, that's a, a very important concept and it's in Autohooksology 101. And I don't have a lot of time for that right now, but I'll do a specific talk on this because fake ability is their main power they can fake reality they can insert things and make them real in this hyperstitious sense as a general rule of thumb anything that they can simulate in a mass casualty drill they can simulate on the news and the special effects are hollywood level i mean that's just where they're at hyper realistic training dolls that bleed and that breathe we know they have inflatable tanks we know they use inflatables dummies decoys crisis actors and drills we know they have all of the production capabilities to do psyops everywhere so is there any reason to think that it's real just because it's war and it's all out there i don't think so i don't think so and does it make everybody liars no i think you have to really consider the compartmentalization of it all and compartmentalization is how this thing works. And Trutherville is in a compartment. They're in a compartment that assumes that the mainstream news is real, but it's wrong. There's more to it. They're lying about it. And that's the model that they're in. So what I'm saying is that their model is wrong. And if your model's wrong, you're not going to understand how man can be responsible for predictive programming. If your model is that the news is real, but they're liars then you're going to have to say there's some kind of strange stuff going on here. But if you recognize that, no, it's the news is uh, totally engineered and it's integrated, the PSYOP Entertainment Complex, it makes a lot more sense. Armin Reese says, why not both the human magicians and their higher power? Collective belief steers attention as a feeding pipeline. Key bono, humans will not live to see the results of their participation. See, I like that line of thinking. I know they can mold our internal world concept and then we can manifest what they want however seven billion people believe in moon landings and it's still fake so um, belief alone no but I think also we're looking at the use of superstition to control minds and it requires our attention so a lot of it is just holding our attention truncating our world shrinking our world putting us in the end times but uh, to your point though about the magicians it is kind of interesting to point out i think that the world does seem to be run by witches wizards and warlocks i mean look at nasa jpl jack parsons l ron hubbard that was all black magic alistair crowley uh, really well, it goes further back than that, but the Lemic, New Age, sex magic, weird demonology. I mean, that is really what typifies the power elite here, uh, magicians. But what is magic would be the question here. And I think there may be something to that as well. I mean, um, one of the main components of what we call magic is, uh, or it seems to be, uh, attention. And this supposed belief in the human will to 
cause change in accordance with the will to be some kind of causal agent in reality itself. And uh, the theory of group magic is that the celebrant, the magician, the witch, whoever is at the altar, is able to use all the people in the room as matrix batteries, whether or not they're aware of what is actually the purpose of the ceremony. If they can read the symbols or not, it doesn't matter. So there does seem to be this area where there's a, you know, sorcery, magic, etc. is part of the worldview of the power elite. It's certainly there. I don't know where it all goes, but that could all be mis... I don't know if it's misdirection, but I don't know. What I'm, what I'm pointing out here is that I'm trying not to mystify what can be explained by ordinary means and propaganda. And if you look at that ancient writing I mentioned earlier, the power elite have always used superstition, weaponized superstition to control people. So I have to figure, well, it could be that they're creating impressions, you know, um, covering their tracks, plausible deniability. But it's a fascinating topic, and I, I we'll have to continue on this later. But I'm going to send a link a couple of links tonight, so make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. You're going to get a link to the conversation I had today with uh, with Armin Rhee on his prognostic podcast, and you'll get, of course, uh, tonight's live stream, and I'm going to put a link to what John LeBond posted about predictive programming, and again, I agree with him 100%. It's not a coincidence. Predictive programming exists, but the debate here, who's behind it? Higher power or man? And is it a stretch to say that man can pre-write history and act it out on the world stage? Anyway, this has been great. We'll be back very soon. And for those of you who are members, I am uploading video content again. So that's just something uh, to look forward to. And I think it'll help um, accelerate the growth of this channel. All right, this is one Eye Jack in the Shell's Death to the Ball.